I just stayed at the best and worst reviewed hostels in Victoria, BC. Do they live up to the hype? We're gonna find out today on Hostel Hopper. The first hostel we're checking out today is the highly reviewed Ocean Island Inn, a solid 4.0 on Google. Both hostels in the video today are located in the same area, but with a huge caveat that I'll get into later. Got to Victoria. It's nice and hot. It's bro crazy. Just gonna take the bus today. It's like a hundred dollars for an Uber. No, thank you. Okay, we just arrived in Victoria, and I'm dead as usual on the arrival. Finally made it here after like seven, eight hours of travel, and we're gonna check out the very first hostel of the trip. It's gonna be called Ocean Island Inn, back backpackers hostel, something like that. So I haven't. I don't think I've ever stayed in a Canadian hostel before. So this is gonna be a different experience. I'm not expecting much to be honest, <laughs> but. Um, Let's see how it goes. Let's go check it out. It's like somewhere on this street right here. Ocean Island is on Pandora and Blanchard Street, right in the downtown core, a few blocks away from pretty much everything worth seeing and doing in Victoria. Do they have this little octopus logo or something? It's a huge piece of real estate. It's a huge building. So, um, I don't know what the amenities are going to be like. I didn't see it. On, I barely checked the hostel out online. So, no f***ing clean, man. Thank you. Coming into this hostel, it was getting a little busy. Canada Day was a few days away, and the Airbnb situation in Victoria is just the worst I've ever seen by far. Can I grab your ID? Yeah, for sure, for sure. When I checked, it was looking like four to five hundred dollars a night for a decent place to yourself. Obviously, a bit cheaper for a single room, but still, it is just absolute murder here in Victoria, Canada, for whatever reason. So right away, we can see a huge surprise. Breakfast and dinner, along with tea and hot chocolate, are completely free, included with your stay here at Ocean Island Inn. That's a W if I've ever seen one. And I can tell you guys, it was solid as well. They pulled no punches with the food. Now let's check out the room. Okay, so let's check out the room. It looks pretty standard, pretty cozy. Got a six bed layout here. Classic. We got actually a fridge, which is pretty rare. This is a standard hostel six bed bunk room. Obviously, there's no curtains here. I'm not really expecting that in Canada. Not bad, we got a little window view here. Some traffic right on Main Street there. Pandora Street here in Victoria. Lockers over here. Oh wow, super organized. You guys can see that, we got little organizers. I've never seen that, that's quite nice. That's a hostel first. We got a little fan up here. Doesn't feel too hot yet, but Victoria doesn't get too hot, so I'm not super worried. Um, no alcohol, don't be drinking. Okay, the question is, do you trust your roommates? Very nice. So in terms of cleanliness, it seems pretty clean. I have no uh, no quarrels yet. Let's see here, looks pretty good. Probably one of the best I've seen. Get two little bins down here. Um, actually, this is not mine. Oops. And throw that. These are quite large. So here's the sockets in the head of the bed. There's no USB ports. It's just standard, standard chargers. We have a pillow here. And a little closet action. That's cool. Blanket, everything else. Pretty standard. Hello. Got a funky mirror, of course. Um, the bed itself was quite noisy. Also the floor. Uh, the wooden floor here in the hostel was noisy. You're gonna feel every single movement of your bunkmate and hear people walking down the hallway. So earbuds with sound on are mandatory, I would say, at least for me. So let's get a bit deeper into the second floor where the bathrooms are. My bathrooms across from my room were actually shut down for maintenance. So this required me going to the other part of the floor. There were a bunch of corridors and each of them have their own washroom equipped with a shower as you guys can see here. Coming out of this door, we get back into my area. 
Now let's take a quick look at the washroom and shower. Pretty clean, no gripes about that. The one thing I'll say is I did have to wait for a washroom a few times, even with the amount they had. It was quite difficult during peak morning hours. There's a lot of rooms here. A conveniently closed vending machine, look at this. Coming out of the hallway, we got vending machines. You gotta love it. It's the little things that count, you know? All right, now let's get into the main feature of Ocean Island, the bar and common area. We got quite a large common area here with lots of seating, a few charging sockets scattered around. This place was really busy during breakfast and man, can't see it here, but almost every seat was taken. I was lucky to get this shot when no one was around. Got the bar area here, and then we got kitchen. Honestly, it's pretty good. It's a great place to chill and meet people during bar hours. One of the biggest kitchens I've seen, actually. Huge. Absolutely massive. All right, let's go. It might be just okay for, for actually working, not great, because there's not a ton of chargers available and they're in very awkward places, I'll tell you. And it might be a bit distracting to get your work done in the main bar area, but it can be done. Wait for you, that's my guy. We're heading out on the town today. Yo, Wagwan, broski, Wagwan. And as I sat down solo to have some drinks at the bar, the place got active, and I met some very cool people here, I gotta say. Everyone was very friendly, lots of other solo travelers as well, all here for different reasons. The magic of hostels, you gotta love this. And how much is it? I totally forgot and was shocked after hearing the total price was free, F-R-E-E. -E. I didn't get a shot of it, but I had some beautifully homemade potato and chickpea curry from the lovely chef here. They were playing Raiders of the Lost Ark on the TV. How can you go wrong with some beers and Indiana Jones? I don't know. So taking a look at the activities going on here at Ocean Island Inn, we got walking tours, bike tours, bike rentals, of which I believe they have the bike stashed in the basement. There's also a rock climbing gym next door, and I think they do some collabs together. It was quite a nice looking gym, I will say. It was huge. Not too much going on. There's a rock climbing place right here. Look at this. Damn, if you just feel like hop into the hostel to rock climbing, it's like right there, man. Another thing I'll mention is non-guests are not allowed inside the hostel. I know this because when I checked out to stay at the next hostel down the street, I was denied entry, which sucked ass because the next hostel, well, you're gonna have to stick around and see where this goes. Storage area right here. So when you go down the stairs at the entrance, it leads you into the basement area. Got lockers. Actually massive. Huge, huge. Actually, let me get my locker. Which is equipped with lockers and a laundry room and bike storage. That's pretty much it for the highest reviewed hostel in Victoria. Did it live up to the hype? I'm gonna get into that as well as prices paid at the end of the video because we can't give it a fair rating without seeing what's next. So let's go, let's get into the juice. Now, are you guys ready to see the worst reviewed hostel in Victoria, BC, maybe in Canada? It's sitting at a solid 2.8 on Google. It has the coveted one star hotel label. Let's see. All right, we've arrived and it's in uh, not the best part of town, I would say. This is the spot right here. Pretty 
Turtle Hostel. This is gonna be interesting. Let's see what's going on in Turtle Hostel. So arriving at Turtle Hostel, how do I say this? Uh, Turtle Hostel is in the hood, man. It's about two seconds away from the biggest homeless encampment on Vancouver Island. You can see it and are surrounded by it the second you step foot outside the hostel. Honestly, it's not really an issue at all during the day, but at night, eh, it's a bit dodgy for sure. Okay, we are in Turtle Hostel right now. It's a completely different vibe from Ocean Island Inn. It is much more cozy. This is the room here, this is a single, and I think I'm paying like like 350 bucks for a week, seven days, so it was not bad at all. Here's the room. And we got a little patio here, which is cool. No smoking. Yeah, very uh, cozy. Let me find the washroom. There's a washroom here that I missed and a washroom here that was in use at the time. Uh, we got a random fridge in this hallway I was not brave enough to open. And we may as well check out the patio. Now, this is the main common area of Turtle Hostel. There's not much else going on here other than a little table in the kitchen. So if you're gonna hang out, it's probably gonna be here if it's not raining outside. No bar, no chargers that I know of, and a little back alley vibe. Yeah, very chill, very cool. Nice little patio. I will say one thing, Turtle Hostel stays on brand, bro. Look at the stone turtle, absolute fire. One thing that was annoying for me was this patio was right next to my room and when people were talking it was extremely loud. I couldn't close the window because I would basically suffocate and die of heat at that point. It was quite toasty in that room, but the window made it definitely doable. It was cool at night. So let's give the hostel a proper look over, starting at the front. Now there's a little cafe right here. I didn't get a chance to check it out, but it looked pretty cool. There's also a few churches right on and across the street, and there was always some street activities happening. Get part of the charm. Anyways, look at this beautiful painting in the living room area of Turtle Hostel. Absolute banger. Best branding of all time. Turtle Hostel, baby, let's get it. Honestly, I love the charm, I'm not gonna lie. Here's another view of the living room, couple comfy couches. And let's get into the kitchen. Bare bones stuff here guys, a fridge, an oven, pots and pans, the basics are covered. There's a sneaky little door that leads to a little deck with some uh, foliage that hasn't been touched since the 90s. A random broken ladder that has officially returned to nature. Respect. We can see a cute little free wireless sign painted right onto the wall here. Must have been from the 90s or something. Absolutely love the cuteness of it. Now we're gonna head back upstairs and get a deeper look at the washroom, which I'm sure you're all dying to see. This is where I can see some people having some issues with Turtle Hostel. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Here's the shower. I heard people talking while I was staying in the hostel and they were having issues with this shower, man. Going on about mold and this and that. Well, here it is. Definitely not the cleanest, but not the worst I've seen, and I've seen some things. We got a notice about an ongoing issue with mildew. Well, at least Turtle Hostel is self-aware. We got a decent looking sink. We got a decent looking toilet. 
and a not so decent vent up top. Almost got away clean, Turtle Hostel, almost. But it's a vent, not the end of the world. Now let's check out bathroom number two, and we got an absolute nightmare of a bathtub. That's one way to deal with a sticky situation, just build on top of it, it, bro, whatever. So obviously that shower is out of order, but hey, we got a clean sink, we got, a, we got hand soap, and we got a working toilet. The cleaning ladies had just finished up, and so I thought I'd peek into one of the rooms and see what the dorms look like, honestly. Looks pretty clean, not bad, not bad. All the rooms have this orange and black vibe on certain pillows or blankets. With the branding turtle hostel, I see you, let's go. Yeah, I have an email, but it's from your Gmail account. It's not from a service. No, yes, it's from it's a, a Turtle Hostel. We connected. It's a lovely template email coming from your private email. No, no, yeah, yeah, so we connected with the actual. We got some drama in Turtle Hostel, bro. We got some drama in the Turtle Hostel. This woman just said, yo, she's kicking me out because I said the place was dirty. Yeah, basically the other woman who was staying here looked at me as I came down the stairs and she was like, can you believe she's kicking me out because I said this place is dirty? Then I was like, oh, sure, I'm, I'm out of here. And I scurried away not to get involved real quick, but yeah. All right, so before I reveal the price and overall opinions on both of these hostels, let's get a better look at the neighborhood. Honestly, this was not a comfortable walk at night, not at all. There was trapping on every corner that I could see, every alleyway. I decided to try to take the back alley one night to get back to Turtle and ran into some guys tagging up the wall in ski masks. Good times, you know. <laughs> Wow, that's a big uh, yeah, encampment, going. dude. Going. That's like a, some on the right, some on the other side of the street. That is like you guys aren't seeing this. There's like a lot over here too. And then look, it keeps going. Oh We're my not done. good! And look out in front of the church. All that, dude. That's fucking and then right here on the side. That's fucking insane, bro. That's a big. So I paused the video to give you guys a clear picture of just exactly how close Turtle Hostel is. It's right here, right across from the church, deep in the trenches. Big spot. I'm surprised you didn't see it because your your yeah, um, like pretty... place is literally right. Oh shit, we gotta find a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to get some shots of the area, some of the grime and destruction. Quite the situation out here on the West Coast. Now let's get into my overall thoughts on today's adventure. First up, Ocean Island Inn. I paid a total of $110, coming in at 47 bucks a night for two nights here. Absolute steal when you look at the hotel slash Airbnb prices in Victoria. Well, I gotta say, Ocean Island Inn definitely lives up to the hype. It has an amazing common area and bar. It comes with dinner and breakfast every single day and night. Great location, albeit close to the trapping, but not directly inside the trenches like Turtle. Now, this is one thing I didn't mention. Check this out. When you guys are booking at Ocean Island, they give you a few options to upgrade your stay. We got early check-in, early check-out, and this one got me, bottom bump. You can reserve a bottom bunk to avoid the whole climbing up ladder situation. You know I'm grabbing that one with the history of top bunks on this channel. As I said, the only issues with Ocean Island, it can be hard to get a washroom and shower sometimes, and the beds are quite noisy along with the floors. It was not the best sleeps. It was the sleeps were not the best I've had. But everything else, super solid. Cannot complain. Thoughts on hostel number two, Turtle Hostel. What do I think of this legendary unit? Well, it has the best branding of all time. I'm just gonna throw that out there, take that in. 
consistent turtle art and colors across the board. Cute as hell, man. I paid a total of 446 Canadian dollars for seven nights here at Turtle Hostel in a private room. I got the full experience, baby. If we're talking pre-tax, that would come out to 55 bucks a night for a private. Not complaining, that's about the best you're ever gonna find in this city, like 100%. Let's get real about Turtle Hostel though. Okay, so it doesn't have a bar. It doesn't have the bells and whistles, the activities. There's nothing social about this hostel at all. It's definitely not for that. Turtle Hostel is for coming in and getting a decent night's sleep and leaving. That's it, nothing more. You can come in and cook if you'd like. I would say it's not really good for remote work because there's no dedicated area for it. Can it be done in the kitchen maybe, in the patio, in the room maybe, sure. But it's not gonna feel productive at all. It's gonna feel very, eh, I don't know. So cleanliness. Turtle Hostel has a bad rap about this, but it was constantly cleaned every day at the same time. I wouldn't consider it like quote unquote dirty, like a lot of people were saying. It definitely had its spots as we went through, but not the worst I've seen, not even close. Turtle Hostel is a niche pick for a certain type of traveler. If you want a cheap private room to lay your head down and even cheaper dorms, well, this might be the spot for you. On this particular trip, I was visiting some friends here in Victoria, so I didn't need the full social aspect that a hostel brings this time. It worked out for me, but uh, Ocean Island Inn is super cool, man, and, and if I was solo for the entire trip, well, you know, I'd have to devote way more time in that hostel. That would be my pick for sure. Wait, but before you guys head out, if you want to see more on Victoria, I did pretty much everything that you could do in this city. That's going to come up in my next video. If it's out, I'll put it on screen right now. Go on and click that if you're interested. Please smash that like button if you got some value out of the video. I'm a small YouTuber and would really appreciate it. Subscribe for more and thank you guys so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one later. Also, I'm a little sick right now, so if I sound different, that's why. Thanks, Victoria. I never get away from these trips unscathed, man. I don't know what it is.